day three. Welcome back to my channel. This is Redhead Goes Healthy. If you are new here, I am on a 21 day reset challenge, mind, body, and soul. If you're interested in following that journey, learning more about it, feel free to watch the video above or look at the daily goals listed below. So the first thing that I wanna address, uh, I wanna talk about how I felt after yesterday. So I am following a 5-2 method where I eat normally five days out of the week. I'm still doing intermittent fasting. And then two days out of the week, Monday and Thursday, I will uh, reduce my calories by quite a bit, 75%. So ideally I should be hitting like 600 calories on those days, but yesterday I found that I just simply could not do that without feeling like I was putting myself, I don't know, into some serious trouble. Like I just didn't want to feel that hungry and that like um, that much of a deficit. I ended up eating 950 calories, which for me is still a crazy deficit. That is still a very few calories compared to what I normally eat. And I felt fine. I actually felt okay. There were moments yesterday where I felt very hungry, but it wasn't a hunger that I couldn't handle. And I, I really just stuck to eating whole foods, like healthy foods, because I wasn't about to waste a calorie on like a chip or something like that. So I had like baked potatoes, I had a ton of vegetables. However, this morning I woke up at like 5 a.m. because I was hungry. I had a dream where I was looking for food and I woke up feeling like I was starving. It went away. I ended up just drinking some water that was beside my bed and it, it so it, it disappeared. I went back to sleep and then woke up at like, you know, seven o'clock or whatever. And I didn't feel that level of hunger again, but I just wanted to kind of like share with you guys the experiences that I'm going through with like eating that less of the, the calories and to honestly say that I will not do anything that is gonna jeopardize my well-being or my health. So I am so thrilled that today and tomorrow is just like a normal calorie day and I'm doing the intermittent fasting. I did weigh in this morning at 180.6, so that's a loss of 0.8 pounds. Again, it's the very, this is only day three, so total I think that is a loss of almost two pounds and I don't wanna lose a pound a day. That is impossible. I'm not at a deficit of 3,500 calories. So a lot of that I think has to do with water weight. I am gonna like level out. I'm, I'm assuming, especially after today, which is a normal calorie day. So stay tuned for the weigh-in tomorrow. All right, so let's talk about my mind. Okay, so today we are continuing our journey through the divine comedy, which is a metaphor for our lives and feeling misaligned with our true selves. We are still in what Martha Beck calls the dark wood syndrome. Yesterday, we talked about what the symptoms of that syndrome looks like. And today, what we're talking about is sort of like what to do about it. The first step is to just simply admit that you're in it, to not resist it, to not fight it, to not try to think that you're not in it. If you're feeling dissatisfied with life, you should be able to feel those feelings. And what she actually provides for us is an exercise where we say out loud some of the things that we might not want to say. So I'm just gonna read a couple of those sentences and see if it resonates with you. Some of them resonated with me. These are the ones that sort of resonate with me that I rarely admit to myself. My life isn't perfect. I don't feel good. I'm scared. I need help. I'm not one to ask others to help me and to say that out loud, I need help, uh, is hard. It's hard. So all of those were a little difficult for me to say out loud. She asks you to notice how it feels inside your body every time you just kind of release that energy and you just admit it and say it. And I will say, I when I went through her full list, I did feel 
I guess like a sense of peace after saying each sentence. So it's something that I, I think I need to return to over and over again, just to, to try to just kind of move through this. Now we're already on chapter two. I should say the book is pretty easy to read. So already we're on chapter two. Chapter two is all about, uh, she calls it the desperate need for success. So like, what are the things that we think that we need and how is that actually impacting our ability to find our true selves? She reminds us that again, if you find yourself in this space, this dark wood of error, she reminds us to not jump to a quick fix. Don't think that you have to, you know, be more successful. You need to make more money. You need to be in a better relationship. You need to lose weight really fast. That sort of mentality where you're thinking like, well, if I just fix something about myself, then I'll be able to be happy. And she says something that's somewhat controversial, I think to some of us, success does not equal happiness. Even though we've been taught that, we've been taught that if you make a lot of money, then you are going to be happy. If you're successful in your career, then you are going to be happy. And I don't know about you guys, but I have found even in my own life, the goals that I've reached, when I reach them, my happiness maybe lasts for a couple of days, but then I still am left with this feeling of dissatisfaction. And I really appreciated that Martha Beck talks about that because that's something that I've always thought is just a condition of being human. And I know that might sound kind of dark and existential and, and not, not encouraging at all, but I've always thought that maybe at the core of all of us is this emptiness. But she, I think, is gonna talk about maybe more of the reason why we feel that emptiness and what we can kind of do about it, which I appreciate that perspective a lot. One of the big things of this uh, beginning of this chapter is that she talks about how we are constantly comparing ourselves to others. So it's not just enough to be successful in our own lives, but we have this false understanding of success as being, I have to be above that other person. I have to be better than that other person. Once I'm better than that other person, then of course I'll be happy. And again, she's sort of trying to combat that misunderstanding of what true happiness is. And then we will close out today with a thought exercise that she provides. So I wanna kind of take you guys through that. Uh, I found it to be really helpful, so hopefully it, it helps some of you too. First thing is, think of an ad that showed you a product that you really, really wanted. Like you really wanted whatever was being advertised. Sit with that for a second. Think about how your body feels and what you're experiencing emotionally when you think about wanting that thing. Not necessarily getting it, but try to think about the feelings that come up when you want that particular object. And she wants you to describe both the physical sensations and the emotional sensations. Next step is to shake it out. And she literally means like shake, like physically get it out of your system, do something else, go, go for a walk, do something completely different. When you find yourself back in a, a state of peace and you've been grounded, she asks you to ask the question of yourself, what do I yearn for? And to sit with that and to do the very same thing, write down the physical sensations and write down the emotional sensations. Did you notice a difference? And she wants you to think about the differences between wanting objects, wanting things, wanting things that society wants us to have and own versus the things that we yearn for. And for me, the things that I ultimately, I think, yearn for, peace, freedom, contentment, happiness, the material objects. It's remarkable with something like that was the latest purchase I made where I was like, that's gonna make me happy. That's, that's what I want. And it's really awesome still. So I'm questioning her method here. <laughs> but anyways, she ends this portion of the 10 pages with, the more divided you are between your true inner self and this other like cultural self that's kind of been imposed upon you, um, the more that what you yearn for is not gonna match up with the things that you desire or crave. So I thought it was kind of interesting. I'd love to hear your thoughts on what she's talking about here. And uh, I will see you guys tomorrow for the next 10 pages. And now the body.
then finally the soul feel free to meditate along with me and this is a quick five minute energizing meditation so go ahead and find yourself in a really tall comfortable seat root down heavy through the sit points lift up tall through the spine stacking shoulders on hips stacking ears on shoulders Notice your breath as you begin to settle in and down. Feel the life in the body. Notice the belly and the ribs expand with each breath in. And feel the release, the contraction with each exhale. There's a deep well of energy that lives within each and every single one of us. And often we're trained to seek that energy externally. But today we're going to draw our attention inwards. Tune into the area of your torso from the shoulders to the hips. like you to envision a bright energy beginning to stir in the torso. Perhaps you're noticing a color, a bright white light, or any other color that comes to mind. Notice any embers and aliveness that surrounds that bright light. As it begins to stir, notice that bright light expand with each breath, bringing life and energy to more and more areas of the body. Notice with each inhale that expands wider until it's fully encompassing. With that stirring, with that expansion, notice the energy within the entire body. Bring your awareness down to your fingertips. Really tune in. Notice any life there. The pulsing. The heartbeat that perhaps you can feel in the thumbs. That humming energy of aliveness that resides in your very physical being. Bring that same awareness down to your feet and into your toes. That humming. The tingling sensations that aliveness. Your very own well of energy that is always within you. Notice that prana, the life force, the energy, the chi that continues to pulse, to beat, to breathe throughout your body always. Return back to that physical stirring sensation whenever you need extra sources of energy. Thank you so much for practicing with me. My name is Kira Michelle and I'll see you on the cushion next time. 
Okay, guys, I will see you again at the end of the day when I do my daily goals checklist. Okay, so let's talk about today. I weighed in at 180.6, as I said. I did my reading for today. I absolutely closed all three rings today, and my total move goal, 750. Total calories burned is 2,500, so that is a check. I got my gallon of water in. I, let's just say, regular. Calories consumed today was 1975. Check. Meditate. Check. And film and upload this accountability video. See you tomorrow.